Finally, you have already decided to take a river cruise, but did you really know everything about it? Unlike traditional vacations, which entail booking a hotel room and relying on car rentals and public transportation to get you to all the sceneries you want, river cruising truly allows you to casually explore the places without worrying about how to get there. Today, you learn the 15 secrets you should know that the cruise lines probably won't tell you about, and certainly not even in their advertisements. Remember, the goal here is not to put you off river cruising, but there are a few things we believe you should know to ensure that if you decide to go, you get the most out of it. Before we proceed, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get into it. Number 15. You can only cruise for a limited time of the year. To begin with, the cruising season is limited. In Europe, the season typically runs from April to October. In reality, there are really five months out of the year for European river cruising. While there may be certain Christmas or New Year's cruises, such as Christmas market cruises, the ships are often placed in the harbor and essentially retired for at least the first three months of the year. As a result, you can only go cruising for a limited time which makes the demand very high and cabins get booked very quickly. You can also expect that the rivers are packed with ships due to the limited season. Number 14. Your itineraries will probably get adjusted. The second and most crucial thing to remember is that your itineraries may be altered due to water levels which are either too high or too low. On a cruise, you may discover that the schedule is changed very close to the time you book to go or that you end up staying in one area and being bussed to excursions while on the ship. What's noteworthy about river cruises is that you don't go that far, so you might just be traveling 20 or 30 miles, but this can be disastrous in some seasons. In 2022, the low water levels on the Rhine practically shut down the river. Typically, low water levels are due in July and August, so if you can avoid booking a cruise during those months, 13. Your choices are minimal. River cruising ships have the same exterior because they must be specific in length, width, and height to pass the standard. So if you truly want to grasp the differences, you must check inside or watch videos to suit your needs, especially on their amenities. Facilities and options are severely constrained, as well as the dining options. You'll usually discover that you could only dine in the main restaurant, with no room service or alternative. If you enjoy having a reasonably simple evening, such as on an ocean cruise where you might just go to the buffet restaurant, that is not an option on river cruise vessels. On most river cruises, you must order a full sit-down meal. Number 12. The scenery may be limited while docked. Another thing that many guests on river cruises are surprised to learn is that the ships usually park parallel to each other, often three or four deep. You'll frequently find yourself encircled by another ship, so if you're in your cabin, you're literally looking directly into another cabin. It can be very gloomy, and to get into the land, you have to go through or climb up the sun deck, and this isn't a one-time thing on busy rivers. Number 11. The places and excursions are highly similar across all river cruise lines. The destinations and excursions you visit are very similar across all river cruise lines. They frequently stop in the same spots and go on the same adventures, although more cruise lines are attempting to diversify that many of them offer more active hiking or bicycle tours you'll find that they all stop at the same spots and provide the same excursions. Excursions don't differ significantly, but most cruise lines include at least one excursion at each port of call. Number 10. River cruising is very strict. One thing that might shock you as you go river cruising is experiencing how strict it is. It is nothing like ocean cruising, where you have much more freedom. You can get up and dine there, but the river cruise is quite controlled. There will be alarms waking you up at a set time to have breakfast since you need to leave on excursions at a particular hour. Of course, you must return because the ship may travel along the river and embark on other tours. Lunch will be served at the same time with minimal options, and dinner, as previously said, will be done at a specific time and will be a multi-course meal. There will be port briefings or speeches in the evenings and possibly some local entertainment. It's a structured and planned event. Of course, you can choose not to go on the excursions and therefore gain more flexibility, but keep in mind that you will have paid for the excursions as part of your fare. So by not going, you're paying for something that you are not using. Number 9. It is a costly travel option. An important thing to consider in river cruising is that it is a more expensive trip option than ocean sailing. So if you look at July and the Rhine on a budget, you're probably paying around $250 to $275 per person per day, while premium lines are likely to cost $400 to $600 per day. It is without a doubt a more expensive option than ocean sailing. That's partly because the ships are smaller, so they can't spread the cost as thinly as possible and mainly because many things are included in the fee. Number 8. River cruise lines have different definitions of what all-exclusive means. 
One thing you'll notice about river sailing is that almost all cruise lines claim to be all-inclusive. However, you must understand what it entails because each cruise line defines all-inclusive differently. In general, your accommodations, meals, and possibly things like afternoon tea are all included. Some cruise companies, particularly premium lines, will consist of all your drinks and premium drinks throughout the day. Others will only provide beer, wine, and soft beverages during lunch and evening. What's more, when it comes to all-inclusive, it will vary depending on where you're coming from. So for example, if you purchase a cruise to Europe from the United States through Cruise Europe, you'll find that excursions are included, so it all depends on where you're coming from. Some lines include gratuities, while others do not. When you look at a river cruise line that states it's all-inclusive, be sure you grasp what that truly means because it varies significantly between cruise lines. Number 7. It is unsuitable for people with accessibility issues, particularly those in a wheelchair. Another essential aspect of river cruising is that it is not ideal for persons with accessibility concerns, especially those in wheelchairs. River sailing is unlikely to work since, for starters, most cabins aboard ships do not have establishments for people in wheelchairs or with limited mobility. Although ships have elevators, landing at some ports, notably on the Danube and the Rhine, may be very tight ramps to negotiate, as well as cobbled streets and steep inclines. As a result, it is not suited for individuals in wheelchairs, and there aren't many cruise lines that provide accessibility accommodations. So double check with a cruise line if you're in a wheelchair or have accessibility issues. Number 6. Most river cruises consist of older passengers. River cruising has an impression of catering to old travelers. And in truth, it is mostly older travelers in their 50s, 60s, and 70s and above. Now, river cruise lines are attempting to attract more families and offer more family or multi-generational trips during peak school holidays, with extra activities and attractions for children. Still, the entire structure, amenities, and dining style are more mature and slightly older adult experiences. Number 5. A lot of solar travelers are very drawn to river cruising. Along with older passengers, one of the traveler groups that is particularly drawn to river sailing is solo travelers. However, it can be a costly way for lone passengers to cruise because most cruise lines would charge twice to occupy a cabin, especially during peak season. More solo bargains are being offered by cruise lines during off-season shoulder months. If you're a solo traveler, it's a social way to travel because of the small groups and the ease with which you can get to know people. Yes, it is an expensive alternative, but look at the beginning and end of the season when cruise lines find it slightly more challenging to fill slots, so they make more solo deals. A few cruise lines provide smaller accommodations and more solitary cabins, but remember, they still come at a cost. Number 4. You're going to go through a lot of locks. Another thing to remember when sailing along rivers, particularly the Danube, is that you'll go through several locks. You might notice that even if you're asleep, there will be noise and bumping as you go through the locks. In case you didn't know, it is a device used to raise and lower boats between different water levels on the river. Some people adore locks and find their technology intriguing, yet it's one of those things that few people consider. While it is really strange to be in your cabin and suddenly see a large concrete wall up against your window. Number 3. The river water tends to be calm. If traveling makes you dizzy, this one might come in handy. It is extremely rare for someone to become seasick on a river cruise as there aren't many waves on a river. It can get windy, but the water is usually calm. If your river ship is docked late at night, you may feel slightly swayed as a cargo boat passes by, but that's all it is. Number 2. Ships are much smaller. Here, the ships typically have one large lounge, a dining room, a reception, and a sun deck. They'll frequently have another lounge in the back, and some will even throw in a few swimming pools for good measure. Of course, this concept has many variations, but in general, that is how river ships are made. Except that most of the cabins have either a window or a balcony but it's worth mentioning that most ships don't have balconies in the classic sense you'd see in an ocean liner. Number 1. They are slightly noisier than ocean cruising. Another thing to note about river cruises is that they are slightly noisier than ocean cruises. More noisy because they are smaller vessels with less ambient noise from the ocean, so if you're a light sleeper, always bring earplugs to make sleeping much easier. It is a little noisy that you might hear people snoring or doing whatever in the room next door, so you must take note of this. So there you have it. These are the things we believe you should know about river cruising that you will not be told. Again, it is not intended to put you off river cruising, but rather to help you better understand the process so that you know what to anticipate when you go. Of course, there are some variances and some surprises. If you like this video, watch our river cruising series to learn more about it. Share your thoughts in the comment section below and please subscribe and hit the like button. You can turn on the notification icon so you don't miss out on any of our travel videos. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next one.